Hello guys and welcome back to Mark Shrimp Tanks. Today we're going to be showing you how to calibrate a pH meter. Okay, this video is going to be pretty informative. If you've never done this before, you're going to enjoy this video. So I'm going to take you through the steps that I do to uh, calibrate a pH meter. And the first one you're going to need obviously is a pH meter. Now this one is just a cheap one. You can get by them like... Uh, for five dollars off eBay or Amazon. Uh, these ones work quite well. Um, I have like two or three of these ones and uh, the only problem I find with, it, with them is sometimes they don't keep the calibration very well but it's easy for me to just to recalibrate them when I need to use them so they do the purpose and they do their job. Uh, these two products here are from Growth Technology and this is not a paid endorsement in any way, I'm not being sponsored by this company or anything. Uh, I got these off a recommendation and that is how I suggest uh, that you uh, go about buying most of your stuff, especially for shrimp keeping because there are a lot of uh, gimmicks etc on the market. Read reviews, do a little research and you should be fine. Okay, and the reason we have two here is because one is set for uh, calibrating your pH, me pH meter to a 7 and this one in here is set to calibrate your pH meter to 4 uh, the way I like to do is I will set it to 7 because this is near the pH that I want to see in my shrimp tanks and then I will check it against this one okay now I have deliberately uh, uncalibrated this pH meter by turning the screw at the bar okay so when I switch this on it's going to read the wrong reading basically. I don't know if you'll be able to even see this. Probably have to pick the camera up a few times to make sure that you're able to see the calibration reading. Okay, but it says 5.3, 5.2. So let's do this, huh? Before you start uh, doing anything, it's important that you shake your uh, calibration fluid because often these will be made from uh, different types of salts and salts will sink to the bottom so you want to give them a little bit of a shake I've already shaked these two but I'm just showing you as a demonstration okay and we're going to calibrate it using this one here pH buffer 7 child safety lock damn it right and I'm going to fill my glass up to the same level as this line here you see it your calibration solution I also use a tall glass because it's very sturdy, it's not going to tip over. Okay, so we're going to fill up to this little line here, that's the minimum water depth or calibration fluid depth. Come on you dumbass! Promise I'm going as fast as I can guys, calm down. Alright, so that is up to the level. I'm going to put the cap back on. Okay, so can you see the reading on this? I might have to move the, the camera a little bit. It's always good when you do this to give it a little bit of a shake at the start because um, air does get trapped up inside here and it may get, give you a different reading. Okay? I'm just going to lift the camera so you can see. 5.3. And then, what we're going to do is, we're going to turn it around, and there's a little screw hole here, and we're going to turn the screw hole, because this one is calibrated um, down the way, the wrong way, we're going to turn the screw hole, the screw here, we're going to turn it anti-clockwise, uh, sorry, clockwise, and that should raise uh, the number back to the proper pH level, okay? I'm just going to move this out the way. And I'm going to bring this glass forward because I want to try and if possible get this on camera. It's very very hard to do. Okay so it's, let's see, it's in the solution. It's in the solution. It reads 5.2. Let's see, can you see that guys? I hope you can see it. 5.2 and we're going to turn it clockwise or anti-clockwise maybe there you go seat climbing 
we want this to go up to 7 and then stop you want to take your time as you get closer to it because it's quite easy to go past it ok 6.9 a little bit more come on come on tiny little bit more there you go 7 and then you want to give it a rest for a second because often it will jump up over this see it's went from 7 back down to 6.9 so it can turn up just a little bit more Sorry guys if you can't see this, it's really really hard for me to do this on camera. Then you want to let it rest. Okay, so it says 7, you can see that it says 7. I hope you can see that it says 7, maybe if I can tip this back a wee bit, there you go, that's much better isn't it? So it says 7. What we're going to do next is I'm going to uh, quickly rinse the pH meter under the tap. Before I do that, I'm just going to put this uh, buffer solution back in this bottle because I reuse my buffer solution. Ugh, the damn chill safety caps, damn it! I reuse my buffer solution because um, I don't think it goes off. I will, I will obviously buy a fresh bottle once it goes out of date though. Okay, so I'm going to quickly rinse this off and we're going to dry the probe and then we're going to use the pH buffer 4. Okay, okay, so that is nearly all of the solution out. Now we're going to fill this back up again with pH buffer 4. Damn these safety cups, Jesus! Now we're going to fill it up to four. Fill it up to four. We're going to fill it up to the line, sorry. And then we're going to let it sit just for a second. I think it is calibrated properly. Okay? Do you understand? Do you understand me? Now you see that it's 4. It has been 7. You saw that before, it was 7 and it was it went to 7. I've now used calibration fluid 4 and it's now at 4. So this meter is now calibrated, okay? And what we're going to do next is, um, I think I'm going to show you a couple of my tanks, what the pH is, if you're interested in that kind of thing. So stay tuned, guys. Stay tuned! Okay guys, welcome back. Let's do some pH testing. Now you're on the tripod here, but it's just easier for me to hold this way, so if you see the reflection, you know what it is. We're going to start with this uh, tank. This was my newest tank, and this was ADA Amazonia Powdered. And we're going to see what the pH is in this. Now this will climb and climb and climb, I suspect, because I think it's going to be nearer uh, 6 eventually if it goes up that high. I think ADA Amazonia powder is meant to be around about 6, isn't it guys? You tell me in the comment section below. I wouldn't be surprised if it is around about 5 though, because I do have some tanks that are about 5. So we shall see. 5. It went to 5, 1, then 5, 0. So I think this one's about 5. I'm not too shocked about that. But because, by the way guys, normally I only test for... I only test for uh, TDS, I rarely ever test for pH unless I suspect there's a problem with the substrate, okay? So this one is 5.7, 5.8, this has this big stone in it so I'd imagine the pH will be a bit higher than the other ones. Seen a nice uh, saddled female there, isn't that cool? So this is climbing 6.3. And it's a good indicator as well, guys, if if your uh, pH meter is uh, running out of power, if the you know if the digits climb very very slowly. I suspect this one might be uh, needing new batteries because it is climbing kind of slowly here. Six point seven. 
think this one will be over 7. What do you guys reckon? 6.7, come on, don't make me look stupid, 6.8. I also have um, fixed the filter on this. By the time you see this you would have saw that um, I was telling you that the filter was going to be replaced. I'm still going to replace it because I hate this white tube here that's on it. But the filter is working perfectly now. All that was wrong with it was, it was the pipe was needing a cleaning, a clean inside, it was full of gunk, so that's all that it was. Seven. So this is my cherry tank, the one you see in my update videos. Seven, and I think it's going to, is it going to stay around to a seven? I think so. So that, this one is seven. I'm not going to do the vase, I don't think. You don't want to see the vase, there's nothing really in there. We are going to do a coal tank. Give it a little bit of a shake. This one has quite a big stone in it as well, so the pH may be higher in this. This has no active substrate. This was actually intended to be for uh, cherry shrimp as well. I do have a lot of cherry shrimp in here, but it's mostly populated now with my uh, pearls from my crystal shrimp. 7.1 that has moved at all. I'm just going to check this um, ram's horn snail tank as well, because I suspect this will be roughly about the same. Seven point one, which is fine for snails. Seven point one, the mass. Okay, so we're going to do this big tank now. I have done this one before, and I know. The Akadama and this one has dropped the pH quite a bit, so I think this one is roughly before we do I think it's about 5, 5.2, 5.5, something like that, but it's been a while since I've done it, so it's going to have to go in through the top. And I hope I don't drop my pH meter. You can already see how fast it's dropping. I can't really put it all the way in here, so it might not read properly. But you, all, you guys all know that already, that Caradina like um, soft water. And this is why Akadama is so good. It's a very, very cheap substrate. And it buffers the pH down quite nicely. 5.5. I thought it would be around about 5 to 5.5. 5.4. And I know you guys want to see this as well. I mean, it's not like I'm dragging out the video or anything. Because if I don't do all the tanks, someone will say, Mark, did, can you do that tank? And I'm like, well, I might do it next time, when I could have just done it now, so. This is what you're going to see. 5.3. Is it going to stop at 5.5.2? Come on, 5.2. I think it might stop at 5.2. So this one is quite low. 5.1. I just hope I can get my fingers out of here because I've kind of been jammed in this little hole. Five point one. Okay, that will do. Five point one for the big tank. I'm just gonna drop grab my chair. Alright, and then we're gonna do my Taiwan B tank here. Now this one has recently had a a substrate change, and I didn't put it on camera for quite a few reasons. Uh, this tank is hell of a hard for me to film when I do anything like that in it. Basically because uh, the height of the roof here is really really hard for me to film and do stuff in the tank at the same time. And because I stupidly put the coal tank here, it is right in front of this side of the tank as well, so it makes it impossible for me to do stuff on camera on that side of the tank normally. So this was um, Shrimp King soil and it said it would buffer the soil between 6 and 6.5 and this looks like it's staying at 5.7 which is fine by me, 5.8, I don't mind if it's a little bit low, I think the Shrimp Caradina species like that anyway. 5.8 
go into this little tank. This one probably is about 6 point something, 6.5, 6.4. Five point eight, five point seven. Maybe I was wrong. Five point eight. See this one. This is my crystal black colony. Five point eight as well. Thing at 5.8, if you don't want to move, 5.8 is fine. Also, guys, um, the reason for checking your pH, of course, uh, because I just said to you guys that I didn't think it was that important that you check pH all the time, it is important for one reason, and that is to check your soil to make sure it is still buffering. Because once it starts to lose its buffering capacity, you will probably struggle to keep caradina. Okay, so that is the reason I do it every so often. I don't do it religiously like every single week, maybe once a month or something I'll do this. Can you see that? It says 5.4, 5.5, which is fine for me. Okay, so that is how you calibrate a TDS meter, and that is the pH's. I said TDS meter there, didn't I? That is how you calibrate a pH meter. Okay, and I've told you the reasons why as well. So I hope you enjoyed today's video, learned something new. I'll catch you all in the next one. Hadabra! That means goodbye in Norwegian. Hadabra, damasis! Bye!